Awesome. Well, welcome everybody to another Build Your Presence webinar. Today, we have a great topic that we are going to cover on how to generate listings in a low inventory market. If you do hear me clear my throat a little bit, I'm sorry, it is cold and flu season, but I will try to keep it together as best as possible. But today we have a bunch of topics we'll kind of be diving into, really understanding low inventory markets, strategies for generating uh, in generating listings in a low inventory market, as well as how you as an agent can really thrive in a low inventory market. So as always, these webinars are recorded and we will send out a copy of the recording to all of our participants afterwards. Um, at the end of this webinar too, we will have some time for a Q&A session, but fe please feel free to drop questions in the chat as we go along with this as well. Um, before I introduce my very special guest today and one of my clients, I did want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Sebastian Atienza, and I'm one of our VIP client success managers here with Luxury Presence. I have the fortune of working directly with a lot of our clients on their digital marketing presence as it relates to SEO, paid media, content, social media, and of course, the website as the, the itself as well. So my special guest today is Sam Palmer, who is an absolute titan in the luxury real estate sector. His footprint extends across continents with him living in London, Australia, Switzerland, Monaco, and of course, Los Angeles. Sam introduces a distinctive international perspective and an expansive global network. This has naturally led to him to specialize in the discrete realm of off-market listings and his knack as an off-market property specialist, which we'll dive into a little bit more today. Above all else, Sam values and understands the importance of client privacy. In addition to consistently securing record sales for clients with his localized expertise, including his current highest Brentwood sale of 2023 at $30.5 million estate, Sam and his wife also work together to develop homes. Sam is a unique agent with an edge to support his clients and adapt to their distinctive needs and situations, which is why I'm so excited to have him on today to talk about his strategies. Now, Sam, before we dive into all of this, I would love to kind of give you the floor to introduce yourself. Just tell us a little bit more about your journey in real estate. Well, but yeah, hi, everybody. Um, nice to, well, I can't see everyone, but nice to be here. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, the, I'm, I suppose I would call myself a newer agent, and I'm a bit of an anomaly because obviously I've managed to come in at the very top end of the market rather than starting low and and working your way up. So obviously for anyone who doesn't know me, the reason, one of the reasons why is because um, my father-in-law is Bernie Eccleston, um, who started Formula One. And we live in uh, Los Angeles with our four children. We've been here six years, but we also lived in one of the most famous houses in um, America, if not the world, which was the Spelling Manor, um, which if you're not, um, Aware of it, it's a 56,000 square foot property on uh, four acres flat. In, it's probably the best location in, in, uh, in the US, if not the world, one of. One of. Um, very special property, but that's kind of why I've been able to come in at this end. And it's using that network to be able to come there. But me and my wife, as I say, we, we flip our houses in, in, in the luxury end. So it's kind of we're, we're house flippers ourselves. Um, we've done it now three times, um, and we're never going to stop. I don't think, and I think we're getting better each time. So that that's really us in a nutshell. I like it, definitely. Well, I'm really excited to kind of just dive this into with this too, because you just have a unique perspective on the space in general. Yeah, I'm um, just like one of our first topics that I really wanted to dive into was just understanding a low inventory market. So. There is just many factors that can really constitute a low inventory market. I mean, increased competition for the limited pool of properties, rising prices on properties, longer search times, really needing to hone in on delivering for clients and just like that unique value proposition that each of you can bring. So Sam, I kind of one of my first questions that I wanted to ask on this was just to, for you to kind of share your experience of operating in low inventory markets and particularly in the space of the luxury segment. Um, on top of that, I kind of just wanted to touch on specific advantages that you may have of being an off-market property specialist and what that actually really means. Yeah. The, I think, to be honest with you, I haven't known any different. Definitely. <laughs> um, I've been an agent for two years and I've only been in this country for about six months of that time. So I had to learn and adapt. I, I worked 
predominantly, I, in actual fact, I've done the trifecta of bad jobs. So I've done uh, luxury cars. I've done um, recruitment for eight years, cars for eight years, and now um, real estate. So I've completed all of the bad jobs that you can possibly have. Uh, it, it was, I, I, I saw the need for us, but it was, it was kind of a no-brain. I was doing recruitment, love recruitment, owned my own firm. But then we were developing, we were redesigning homes and flipping them. And I just thought, well, why am I not taking more, better care of our network? And actually, mm -hmm. um, I started um, at Hilton and Highland. And then very quickly, we moved away. Um, and I knew that we would probably be a, a family that is going to move in different directions mm -hmm. Um, quite a lot. We've we've been, I say, six years. But in the six years, we've lived in London, Los Angeles, Monaco, Switzerland, and we've lived in three houses in LA plus a couple of rentals. So we, in six years, we've lived in about eight houses. Definitely. So we we don't sit still long. So I kind of realised I had to pivot a little bit, um, and I was trying to work while I was in Switzerland last year in Los Angeles, and it's tough. So I kind of looked and thought, right, what do I need to do to, for my life? I've got all this global network. We're in different places. I need to really spend this year setting up my network, basically. And when I say that, I mean mainly with other agents around the world, um, developers, but mainly other agents. I need for me to be able to operate how I do. I need partners that I can trust and really be my boots on the ground because I'm, and, and it's kind of working out of not being everything. Yeah. I can't be everything. Um, I don't, and, and low inventory markets in a, in a regular housing market, for example, for sort of the one to five million range, it's not, it's something I don't even look at. In actual fact, I went the other day and showed a million dollar apartment to somebody and i actually thought wow this is so much work like yes. <laughs> up without everywhere and i was just like and i actually come back and i said i don't know why anyone would do that market it's so it's so difficult like mm. compared to what i think my market is because there's less less offers there's less in some ways the the million dollar buyer is the first time buyer maybe so it means so much more to them in some ways whereas some people here are buying it for investment on a third property or things like this and you can kind of talk to them regularly and i think that one thing is people get scared of the price tag whereas i'm actually more scared of the other price tag because it's that that's stressful and went somewhere and there was 10 offers and, and I wasn't used to being in that market. So I was kind of a fish out of water. Definitely. Yeah. Um, where did the off market property specialist come from? Um, it's something I've fallen upon. London, it's very big. It's, it, everything's hidden in London. It's not like the US. Um, the way they do business in London, I think, is very archaic. I actually think the agent and broker model in the US is much better because you earn money. So a lot of people in the in the UK, they're paid a salary and let's just say the biggest real estate agent there might earn three to 400,000 a year where the biggest agent in, in the US might earn 12 million a year. Yeah. So it's, there's a big difference. So there the broker earns, the, the brokerage earns the money. Here the agent earns the lion's share of the money. But in... Because of that and the way the splits are set up there, it's you need to have off market. People don't want it out there. It's just it's completely different market to here. And it's about this hidden market. And I kind of we we done a couple of deals there and we, that's kind of where it started. But then I kind of realized, well, there is that in the US as well. Like people tell me about properties all day long. And I thought, well, this is just, this is information that I've got. This is an off-market listing. It's not a, a listing I've got. And obviously, you have to be very careful with the MLS if you've got a listing and you're not putting it on and things like that. I know the laws have changed. These are things I know of that I get to sit with my network and say, oh, I've got this just come up and things like that. I'm very, very lucky and fortunate that 
to be able to come into the luxury space because it's to come into luxury space, you're only as good as your network. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the difficult bit for people trying to break into it. I can, I get it. And I do know I'm completely privileged with that, but that's my niche. Um, my niche is that I live in the same houses as, as we sell. So mm -hmm. I advise someone on buying a $30 million property because we do. Um, mm. and, and you can say, well, I'm looking for what, and I've found that. And a lot of people, um, have sort of comment on that and say, oh, you really understand it. And I say, well, because I live in the same house. It's, 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 it really is. You're just talking to them. And then they go, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we got you with our real estate agent. Um, so it is, there is, I want to build actually a bit more of my on-market presence a little bit more. And that's something that I'm actually, because the problem with being an off-market specialist is you can't publicize anything. So it's all... You do deals. I do deals in London, do deals in Switzerland or something, but it's so secret that you can't say anything. So it it almost people go, well, this guy, does he actually do anything? Mm. <laughs> so you, you need to do some on market. And that's what I like about here. Because to be honest with you, it's easier to sell on market than it is off because yeah. more people can see it. Um, unless it's something really, really, really special. And that's kind of where... I've got to, I'm not looking to sell a hundred homes a year. It's more about, I've, and I've, and I've really had to dial that in, in the last few months, I've really looked at who do I want to be? What's my business plan going forward and how do we execute it? Because before I was a bit more scattergun approach, Absolutely. But having the access is a big thing, but I would say that to any agent. Any agent can get access to anything. Just start speaking to more agents. Mm -hmm. That's that really is it. Now I know agents will speak to me because I'm also a client, so they always think they're going to sell me something, so, which is great. Um, but I always say to them, "Hey, have you got anything that you need put into my network? Um, that I might not have something that week. In fact, this week I need an off-market listing to go out on on a on an email flyer that." I need something new. So I, I just called someone a minute ago and said, what have you got? And they said, oh, this is coming up. This is coming up. And so then just by that conversation, now I know of two more properties yep. that don't exist in the market that could be interesting for someone. But the agents, I think, are absolutely key to working with each other to be able to go forward. I really like, and that's why I pick up, I, I, you'll never see me list a property ever on my own. Because I don't, first I don't want to. Yeah. And, I know it would earn more commission for me, but I have zero interest in doing things on my own. It's not fun. Um, and it's, you're going to, I pick up the perfect partner for that job to actually, then we can say to the client, look, we got it done. I like that. No, I think that the big thing you can continue to hone on, and we'll go over this a little bit more, is just that re referral network component and just always like getting yourself a niche as well. I think one thing that you touched on, like, I, I have a lot of clients that are like in the ultra luxury condo space, but a lot of being in the condo space, a lot of that is people who come in at rentals only. And then it's just like, how do we get, how do we get that niche of those that is that ultra luxury segment of the condo market? So I don't know, that'll be kind of fun to kind of talk about a little bit more. I did see one question and you kind of related it to a referral network. We see in the chat right now, a lot of people are dropping their Instagrams, their social I love that. I love being able to connect everyone in here. So of course, we'll kind of send out some of this stuff too and just make sure that you ha have all of um, Sam's information too. But I did see one question in here that I'll pause for. Um, are there flyers or something that you use to kind of get your name out? Um, they are very picky about marketing and not sure what's been working as heavily lately. Actually, this is a really good thing. So in, I realize so this is for anybody. This is a great one because obviously some things I say don't relate to everybody. This is my theory in real estate is if you spend more than your competition, you will be seen more. That mm. I think if, and I'd like to actually see it because if you could just spend an unlimited amount of budget, I think you'd see more and more come back. Um, if you can get back at the back you and do that sort of stuff, I think, but there is things you can do that, you have to reinvest in your business. And, and I was guilty of this. Um, 
like buy it since by having luxury presents do my my website and now something i'm proud of I, I had one before from a competitor of yours it was rubbish i in actual fact i never got one lead from it ever mm. so and i just thought that was normal i thought oh okay that you don't get leads from websites i didn't really know i'm i'm the least tech savvy person that you'll ever meet um so i done that i i said right it's a uh, I think, and this is where you got got your low in. Uh, do you know what I hate even saying this low inventory um, <laughs> market because I, for me that's just like it's excuse for lazy realtors. Um, there is deals going on right now. Mm. It was, I said this to me the other day. It's such a low inventory market, and I said, well, I could tell you probably twenty homes right now, twenty million and above. That is not a low inventory. I said. It's a low quality design and price problem because there's junk that's being built and they think the client is an idiot that is going to buy it. That's probably what's changed. Um, but everyone, so I, I decided, right, other agents are sitting at home. They're disinterested. They're not earning money. We've had 65,000 or 100,000 agents leave the business this year because they can't afford to carry on. I was like, this is the perfect time to really ramp up my marketing efforts. And so what have I done? I'm posting more content on Instagram. This is, that's free. Um, I'm actually starting to film some stuff, which I don't really want to do, but I'm not dancing, that's for sure. But do <laughs> in, <laughs> informative sort of stuff on um, uh, Instagram, just kind of like this this chat right now, just film it, put it out there. That's right. free. There's no excuse for anyone not doing it. Um, I am honing in on the area I live, which is Brentwood in Los Angeles. Um, I live here, so what can we do? New website. Um, I've just done a newsletter. And to be honest with you, what I've stopped doing, and my marketing department will go mad if they hear this. <laughs> I was with Hilton Highland. I went to their marketing department for a long time, asking what could be done. And all I kept getting back was mm, mm, nothing. So I left and I went to the agency. Mm -hmm. and, um, blown away by their sort of more global presence and, and their sort of forefront of marketing. And the amount of tools they gave an agent, I was, I was really blown away because I thought nobody gets anything. Um, and this is not to, to slag the Hilton Highland off at all. It's just a different right. way. And um, actually, they've got, what it is, is they've got agents, they had agents that were so high up and everything. They didn't need it because so, they have it themselves. So I think that's a part of it. Um, but the agency's got all these tools that you go in there and they give you flyers and they give you... All, all these incredible things, social stuff. And I look and I think, if you're not using that, like why? You're moaning you're not getting things through social. Or, and it's like, well, have you put an email list together? Yeah. Have you, have you, are you sending out a flyer each week? No. Um, but I also, the reason why I said they're probably going to kill me, I stopped, asking, I stopped asking for people's opinion. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Um, so I created my own newsletter that goes with my brand and I wanted to send it out. So I wanted something, I didn't want something with the agency plastered all over it because yes. ultimately it's my business. I work with the agency and it's got logos on it and things like that, but I didn't want it to be an, an agency thing. I wanted something different for my clients because I wanted them to see something different. Mm -hmm. um, get it signed off by marketing and they, they said, yep, it all looks good. It's got logos on it. It's got, it's legal. It's got your, your real estate night. So, and then I send that out. Now it looks different um, to what everyone else does. I'm just about to send out some um, things through the door. Um, and well, I'll even tell you what I'm going to do because I don't actually care if anyone else does it. Um, the, um, I'm going to spend money on, we all get these pieces of paper through the door that with the picture on it and I'm going to help you sell your house, right? Great. You got to think, they're getting 10, 20 of those a week. They screw them up, they put them in a bin. Hmm. How can you make yours look different? Now, I've done um, a, a booklet, a soft touch booklet, 
And I'm going to spend money on it. It's not, I'm not saying I'm going to spend like 30 grand on it, but it's probably going to cost three, four thousand dollars for probably mm-hmm. two thousand of them. But what I've done is I've done a booklet of me with sales, with story, et cetera, the agency, et cetera, all, all in there. Then I've partnered with a furniture company um, who makes luxury furniture, but actually a lot of it, what you see sitting here. Um, yeah. And uh, there's security companies. We're all going for the same client. So why don't we share the marketing cost, put something together like a magazine, mm-hmm. that, and it just takes a little bit of coordinating to do it, but it's not. this is not rocket science, but it's just something different. Now, my cost for doing it is probably less than what people are sending out a piece of paper because I've got four other companies to do it with and they want to be partnered with me and it will look then like we're partnered together. They might get something out of it. Now, if you get one hit out of that, great. Um, I've taken on a PR team. Um, I'm lucky that I get a lot of press, so we wanted to hone that away from pictures of us coming out of a restaurant to actually stuff that's good. Um, so we've done interview and, and weirdly, actually, I've done one article for Mansion Global and I got two listings off it, which I, I was really quite shocked at that, to be honest with you. But they really liked what was said in that article. Um, and if I'd had a PR team, hadn't had a PR team, I wouldn't have got that. Um, but that's what I think people have to realize that this is a business. If you put zero into your business, you're going to get nothing back. Um, Once you get a few commissions, like like I would be putting, and it might be you have to build that money up and then you've got to have a marketing. You can't, you can't run a business with no, if any business Like you guys, you're selling websites, for example, Mm -hmm. no way you can do it by just opening a website and saying, Come and hopefully everyone's going to come and buy a website from us. So whatever you do, but for some reason, a lot of agents think they don't have to spend a penny on their own business and they're still going to get business. When I, and that's kind of the crazy part because we get big commissions. So you've got to reinvest in yourself. And I think that is my biggest takeaway of low inventory market of what could you do? Mm-hmm. Do more. But can you start a podcast? Can you start um, all these things? There's so many free things that you can actually do. Like, uh, like the email flyer, you could put it so, together yourself if you want. It mm-hmm. doesn't be as fancy as anything. Um, but there's lots. Of, and then obviously spending money, SEO, um, pay for click. It's kind of a try before you buy. Like I, I just tried Zillow leads. To be honest with you, it's not for me, and that's where that million dollar condo come from. But it's <laughs> far. But I've got to be honest with you; they do work. And my phone actually rings probably about ten times a day from them, um, to the point of I'm probably going to employ someone to actually come and just work just the leak. Nurture them a little, yep. Um, because I just haven't got the time to show them the love that actually I need because I didn't realize how much work it was. <laughs> Definitely. No, I think all the things like really trying to drive users back to the website too is such a huge component. Yeah. The email newsletter, like even like I know with you, it's not the same with having listings, but for other like listings that are on on market, but driving users to those specific property pages is also a really easy way to do that through the newsletter. I think what you said of like having your own brand outside of the brokerage is a really big component too. I think one thing that's like a struggle for agents when they come without a website and they're under a brokerage umbrella they don't have that domain authority right off the start to really get that website to pick up. So that's why doing all these things and putting into these efforts into your own business, I think is so crucial as well. And exactly kind of what you were touching. Exactly that. And look, look, the brokerage gives us a great platform and this isn't thing, but you don't want the brokerage to have you by the the balls, by Mm -hmm. say, Oh God, I'm so reliant on them. I can't do anything. Like for me now I've got my own, what does it cost me? 60 bucks a month for my own CRM. Yep. Um, because if things went sour or a brokerage or something like that, you just, you're off and left and your logo changes. That's it. Um, mm-hmm. And you want to have that there because obviously, look, we're all, we're all agents. We want to renegotiate better rates and things like that. If it, that that's just smart. That's business. Um, yep. If you're reliant on one broker, and as I say, like, like brokerages I've worked for, they've been fantastic. Um, 
So it just, if you want more, it might be the thing down the line and you become a top broker and someone else wants to come and get you and there's a, there's a price they're going to pay for you. That's mm. kind of um, the way you have to look at it and you have to start thinking, you have to start taking yourself a lot more serious, I think. I agree. And we just had a question too, just on what CRM you use. I use follow up. I actually got it from you guys because <laughs> it integrates with luxury presence. I've got to say that anyone out there, if you can afford to do so, then you should get uh, a website done by luxury presence because, and this is not an ad, they're not paying me to say it or anything like that. But the working with you guys was so easy. And I am someone that cannot use technology. I'm absolutely, I can just about turn this on. Um, but it was a really fun experience as working with Ali. She was brilliant. Um, but also now they've made something proud, but I made something that I didn't, because of my own inabilities to use technology, I made a website very easy. I'm not putting listings on it. So yeah. that all comes into off-market property specialist. And, and I think, and this is kind of weird, but you can say what, whatever you are. So I can say I'm an off-market property specialist. Not one person on this thing knows if that's true or not. But all of a sudden, it, it sounds cool. No one else calls themselves that. Mm -hmm. so little, little things like that, I think it gives you a little niche. And I've always worked in niche markets. Um, like I said, I worked in luxury cars. Then I worked in um, recruitment. And what I even recruited for was a real niche. So I kind of, it's kind of, I'm not, up to be volume i never have been and i've done it and it's probably because i know it so well neat it's the only things i've ever worked in so i kind of looked and i probably a year ago was trying to be everything but now i'm just focusing on oh yeah no i don't do that and yeah. that's like people actually respect that a lot more i think rather than trying to be a jack of all trades master of none um and I think that's something I would say, find your niche, whether it's selling $1 million condos in one area, go and sell them all. That's, that's what you've got to be, but you just got to hustle to, to do it. I think that keeps you more passionate about the stuff that you do put out as well when you, you have that niche and you have that segment that you're really going forward to. So I agree on that. And I did it, drop uh, your website in the chat for everyone. We did a great custom website for you. It is beautiful. Um, SamPalmerEstates.com. And of course, we'll link some of this and in Sam's information after um, this webinar as well. So thank you. I, I know there's some questions still in here, but I did want to go into the really the big bread and butter of this webinar, um, just strategies for generating listings. And I think we touched a lot on this already, but I did want to open it up a little for you. Um, if there is any other unique strategies you've had to generate listings specifically in low inventory markets and really how you created the referral network that you have today. Yeah, look, I think in actual fact, to break into this area was tough. Um, I, I think actually doing business in LA is actually one of the hardest places in the world to do business. Um, I, I, it's, it's so competitive, especially in real estate. Bear in mind, mm -hmm. go, I'm going up against... People like Jade Mills, who's worked mm. in real estate in the luxury market for 30 years. Kurt Rappaport sold multiple 200 million homes. Drew Fenton, these, these guys are legends. Um, so what gives me the right to compete? And I, and I think, firstly, I was probably too apologetic of my position um, because what well, you've got to remember, like the, the first... The first house I ever sold was 32 million. Yes. So the lowest house I've ever sold is 30 million. So I, I don't know that other in the market, but I was a bit apologetic about it of like, oh, like, because someone like Jade, for example, has put in so many years of sweat equity to be able to get there. And I felt a little bit like, God, I'm come busting the party and I don't want to upset too many people here and things like that. That was my biggest mistake. The minute I turned that off, and, and that's a very British way of thinking. Um, Americans are, I, I think, in some ways, I think, shameless in a way, I would say, to British people. 
because they don't care and they've got this level of confidence that is incredible, actually. I don't think any British person in the world has got. They, they'll do things that we would look at and go, oh, my God, that's crass or thing, but it, they, but it works. So if you come here and do business like someone from England or in England, you will fail. You have to, to do business here, you have to think and act like an American because that is the market. That's what the client and the buyer is used to. They don't want someone to be apologetic for what they are. Yep. And that, at the minute that changed in my mindset, my business changed completely. Because now, if I walk into a room and oh, I keep using Jade, Jade or Kurt or someone's there, I'm not embarrassed to go and speak to them. I just say, oh, how are you getting on? Like, yeah, I'm an equal to you. Yep. And, and someone said it the other day. Someone, actually an agent, did say it to me. He said, oh, you're finally a real real estate agent. And I said, you've got a team of about 15 and I've outbilled you by 100 million this year. I said, I think you, you should be asking me some advice. Because mm -hmm. people are pissed off that I've come in and they've worked hard for it. But let me tell you, Kurt Rappaport wouldn't be apologizing to anyone <laughs> because he is what he is. He doesn't care what people think because he knows he is great at what he does. And ultimately, I think that's what you have to take away from it. Selling houses is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Any idiot can sell a house. It is. The hardest part is the contracts, and that part is actually the bit that actually I am not great at. Is yeah. that that's why I always need a partner. Yeah. So um, I think anyone should take out of it. The hardest part of this job is building a network, and most people will say, um, "How do I get into the luxury? How do I get into it?" As if there's going to be some sort of magic answer. Mm -hmm. uh, you sprinkle this, dance around three times, and all of a sudden you're going to get a $30 million listing. You have got to hustle your ass off to, to create a network. I was lucky I've already got the network. So mm -hmm. then I've got to hustle my ass off to show that network that I'm not playing at this game and add value to them. And that's the hard bit because my network is great, but they want to see – Hey, this guy's come along, like he's telling me he's a real estate agent, but can you actually add value to them? Um, and quite a few friends bought off of someone else because um, they didn't believe in me. But then you start doing it yourself and you kind of say, oh, yeah, did you see the profit we just had out of that house? I could have done that for you. Yep. You didn't have that. Oh, you should have come to me. And then there's the confidence of, of being it because you, you are doing it yourself. So if you do it, if you've got a blueprint of here's what I did, for me, well, then we can do the same for you. And it's just down to people if they want to listen. But it's tough. It's very, very, very tough to get in this luxury market. But I wouldn't be obsessed with getting in it. You can have equally, you can equally earn as much money by selling $5 million homes, $1 million homes. Um, so that's, that's what I would... Uh, I'd focus on what you're good at. I like that a lot. There is some few questions in here in the chat that I kind of wanted to go to as well. Um, one of them in particularly, just again, a lot of questions on like how, and you answered that, there's no just one answer for how to break into the luxury market. But I thought this was interesting. Like, what is the best way to dominate an ultra luxury neighborhood? Is there like w anything that you would say that kind of would pull into dominating one specific area or location? Um, sales. Mm -hmm. If you, how can you dominate? Yeah, the answer is the and, and look, the more you get, the more you sell, the more people go. What's going on here? But why are we not using this guy? Um, mm. you've got to be seen. You've got to be visible. Um, like you've got to take advantage of every every. And this is the, this is the American way of thinking. Like my uh. My kids go to a private school. So in that school, in Brentwood, there's, I've got, there's three classes there. So what's that going to be? 90 kids, 90 kids, 90 families that buy and sell homes within this area. So they need to know that 
you you sell buy and sell homes and things like that. Can you help out at the raffle? Can you help out at this? Now, you know, I, I don't really do loads of that, but but that is straight away. That's where I'm looking. But that's what I mean. Even if kids don't go to private school, you're in a school where other mums and dads are going to be buying and selling their homes. Yep. If they, if, I wouldn't be going to sell to them, obviously, but when you're talking, oh, how was your work day today? Oh, it was good. How was your day? Oh, God, I've had this mad client, amazing deal going on. So then they just start hearing about what's going on. They think, wow, this is a professional. Um, and, and then they hopefully know you're an agent when they come to sell or buy and things like that. But I actually find it, I've had less business off people I know than anything. So I think, it, and that's something, someone said this to me before when I was trying to build a network. They just said, call your contacts. Mm hmm that's the laziest form of advice. <laughs> we call them up and say, hey, I'm an agent now. Like, you, you look like a raving idiot. Um, and it just looks desperate. In actual fact, what I needed to do was go out and find new contacts, sell stuff of theirs, and then the word's going to get around to my contacts, and then they're going to go, oh, what's, what's going on? Why, why have you not come to me? I said, oh, like, didn't think you was interested, didn't want to bother you. And it's a much nicer way in. If you rely on your friends and family, you're going to be broke. <laughs> Definitely. And I, one thing on your website too, you kind of touch on like living where you sell and just like knowing the people. I think that's exactly that, knowing the, 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 the market a little bit. One thing that I will say too that I think is so smart, like that booklet that you're going to do with some of like the local uh, businesses in the area like even creating some sort of like vendors page or like recommendations of people that you work with is so easy. And even if they have something on their website that points to, oh, this is my guy for real estate, just that interconnection in your market, I think is just, is huge. So. Yeah. They're, look, who can you speak to? Interior yeah. designers, um, art, furniture, mm -hmm. all these things that we've all got the same plan. So that's what you got to look at, right? So everyone's got the same problem. How do I get my business out to people? If you make more connections within them areas, all of a sudden you're talking about different things. So now I'm, if I'm with an interior designer, I'm talking about the design aspect. But then <laughs> it all boils down to then when I'm with a client, I can then start speaking about something else of, because you're more educated. Of, yeah. And there's plenty more agents. Like I know Drew Fenton, he is an absolute master on design and architecture. He's studied it. Um, because there's a reason for that because his client is educated so he's educated himself if you don't talk to other people in your industry that's the biggest crime i think that you can do i literally all my best friends are real estate agents now really and we just call each other up at the end of the day and vent and oh, i've got this going on got going on because then you know what's going on in the market if you don't know what's going on in your market how can you expect someone to believe in you to sell Yep. Great. Um, just so I, there's a lot of questions in the chat as well. So I want to make sure we have enough time for yeah. q and But the last topic I really wanted to touch was just on thriving in low inventory markets and how agents can really succeed in that. So I just, one of the final questions I wanted to ask were, what are some of the tactics that you've really found effective for staying productive in challenging market conditions? Or same thing, if there's any insights that you've had to maintain business growth in a low inventory market. I think just touched on them before, like I've now, I know people are sitting at home doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I am ramping up everything I'm doing. Yep. And that might be, uh, sort of said, well, you're going to see a bit less of me now. I'm going to go down the golf course. I'm going to play with new people. I'm going to, um, I'm going to push myself out of the comfort zone, filming videos for Instagram, um, thinking of marketing booklets, things like that. I'm doing it all now because I know my, competition is sitting at home going oh no the market's bad interest rates interest rates are what it is people are still going to keep buying homes simple yep. as that like we can use it as an excuse and i think it is um a massive excuse people use blame it on the market yes the market is down but go and ask the top people in your market whatever market it is if they've done no business this year mm-hmm and they'll say, you mad? Okay, it's a little bit down maybe or things like that. They, they haven't 
it's not it, we I know something is happening here at the moment that it's it's a 20 plus million dollar home and it's just been accepted an offer three million dollars over asking yep that's in that is insane so that well yeah and so people are telling me there's a bad market it's like it's it's not it's just because there's the great stock hasn't been available but it it is been available but it goes so quickly so if you haven't got the right agent you're not even getting in the door yep and it is pay to play as well. I mean, when you say that exactly, like in the holiday times, like people are like, oh, well, no one's looking to sell during the holidays or no one's looking to like, or, or looking at my ads during this time. And that's when people like you actually ramp up those efforts. So I think kind of talking about that is really huge. So I think it, look, you, you can only it's trial and error with, with all yep. this stuff. And unfortunately, look, yes, it does cost money. Mm -hmm. uh, but. If you're earning big commissions, you've got to put money back into yourself. It's your business. And it's kind of like as real estate agents, why we think it's okay not to put any money in whatsoever and mm -hmm. take massive commissions. Um, and that's kind of, you've got to look at it as a business decision of, yeah, we're going to try this. Okay, I'll try it for three months. If it doesn't yep. work, then, it, then I'll get rid of it. Um, think about it like, would you... Should you go out every two nights a week in a restaurant or should you actually spend that money on some Instagram ads or Facebook ads or, or something like that where you can go and earn so much more money? Mm -hmm. uh, like I know if I spend 5000 I've got the potential to go and earn 500000 But that's it's, – it's ridiculous. Agreed. Um Great. I've, I've loved this. I know we did some of those questions already, but of course, just want to open it up for this last little bit of 15 minutes just for Q&A session. So thank you so much, Sam. Um, if people have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and I can promote you to actually ask your question in real time if you'd like. But I am going to pull one of these from the chat. Um, Sam, have you sold any pre-developments or what? and what was that experience like? And if not, could you kind of talk about what luxury clients are looking for right now? Um, I, I'm actually in the process of selling a pre-development at the moment, actually. Um, something that, again, that I just found out was off market, um, sitting in the right room and someone said, oh, I'm kind of looking at a piece of land here. And I said, oh, I've got the best piece of land that you're, you're ever going to see. It's got a bow around it. It's almost through planning. It's even got the renderings, et cetera. And he was like, well, let's go and see it tomorrow. So we went and see it and, and he said, oh my God, this is a complete no brainer. And that was it. Um, that's as hard as it can be. But if I didn't know about that piece of land, then, and I knew about it for two years, just, just was sitting there. Um, but if I didn't know about it, I couldn't have that conversation when it was, when it was there. So it's just been able to retain that information of good, good things available, of deals. What do, what do people want from the luxury space? They either want something that nobody else has, or has access to, or deals. They're the two things. How can I add value? Well, it could be, hey, look, I know this home. Um, developers gone broke on it. We can pick it up for, it's up 20. We can pick it up for 14. We can put two in it, and then we could put it back on the market for 26. This is no brainer. It's just designed terribly inside. We spend this on it. I know we can make this. And someone will say, oh, yeah, I like that. Great. Let's put money into it. Because it's not, a lot of it is they're not doing it for them. It'll be to flip or something like that. So really just break it down easy. It's money equation. And if it's a no-brainer, look at it, what would it be in the worst market? And kind of then say, never oversell something to say, oh, it's going to definitely make this money. But you say, look, here's why I think it can make that money. Here's the proof and, and that. And just give, give your opinion. That's all you can do. And then someone will go, oh, okay, they, they, they're a value add to me. Definitely. And someone asked for your email address in the um, chat. Just know I will send over um, Sam's contact information too, as well as his website for you all to take a look at if you didn't want to connect. Some of this stuff too was still just on um, just the actually the neighborhoods that you work in and what would be the best way to get into my neighborhood. I feel like we kind of touch on that as well. Um, and just people trying to land luxury listings in general in their neighborhoods. Um, 
Going door knocking, it, you know, I, I, it blows my mind that door knocking even works, but mm. it does. Um, and introduce yourself. Hey, um, I live at, start on your street. Yeah. Hey, I live on your street. I've got a friend that just came over to my house and yours is a similar house. Mine's not for sale at the minute. Would you be interested? The worst way you're going to do is you're going to meet a neighbor you've probably never met. Yep. And, and they go, oh, yeah, that guy's a real estate agent. That lady's a real estate agent. Um, it, to be honest with you, it baffles me that in this world that we're living in where the crime is high and things like that, that people actually answer their doors to, to straight <laughs> just and the door. Um, and I, I all, I'm very wary of it because I'm six foot four, so I can understand what it looks like with me standing <laughs> on one's door um, and covered in tattoos. So it's uh, the... I, I'm wary of it. I even try and take my like daughter or like, I've done it with my boys before. But ultimately, you're out there hustling. That's what you've got to do. You might get nothing from it. Um, you might just want to put stuff in the letter boxes. But just don't go too big. Just look at your street and go, okay, here's my street. If you can sell four houses a year on your street, then it's going to add up and add up and I'm because there's going to be friends and family, and they go, oh, my guy's a great guy. Speak to them. Yep. Um, that would be my advice. That's how to break into. Like it. Thank you, thank you. Well, I think that is it in terms of questions on here. If I missed any ones, if you wanted to put that through now, I'm happy to answer that or send that through to Sam. Great. Let's see. So we have a new one. I have a question about selling oceanfront properties, specifically in Ecuador or other countries, that luxury properties are more affordable. What strategies should I consider? I think that's a great question too, just with your your network of um, a global reach. Um, is there any tactics that you do differently um, if you're selling elsewhere outside of the, of the United States? Weirdly enough, I actually went to see something last night, um, which is a little bit out of my way. Us. It's in Santa Barbara. And it is an actual front property. Um, mm. It's probably, it's actually probably one of the best pieces of land I've ever seen. Um, and they, they sort of, oh, it's going to be a real jewel and what you can build it. But I need to then get that out in the press. If we're going to do it, we need to, um, I need to speak to agents. I need to get other agents to see it in my community. I need, I'd need to bring people from LA straight there. We've got the biggest clients. It's all about working with agents, but obviously our system here is designed for agents to work together because there's a buy and sell side. So if it makes sense to speak to agents, people who try and just double end things are idiots and they will lose their listings. Um, try and sell more quickly and then that's what I would do. But yeah, Ecuador, like, I've done it, for, to be honest with you, it's bloody hard taking... Taking on listings in different places in the world where you're not going to sell them, don't bother. That's, that would be my, my – to go and sell an oceanfront property in Ecuador, if you asked me with that, I wouldn't have a clue because yeah. mostly people don't want to live in Ecuador. And yeah. that's other than people from Ecuador. So, like, going spending my time on that, that's what I've kind of realized. Like, I've just given one – it's almost like a castle in Sardinia. And I just said, not for me. It's like, the, 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 it, you spend so much money and time on it that you end up wasting your own time. Sticking to your niche. Yeah, stick to your niche rather than actually just because it's a big price ticket. If, it, if they're coming to an agent that's a million miles away to do it, they probably can't sell it. It's been around everywhere and they can't sell it. I like it. Well, I think we are all set on questions. So thank you again, Sam. I mean, this has been very insightful. I think just in general, just going over some strategies for low inventory markets. Of course, I'll kind of link all of your stuff for everyone too. But this, uh, again, just thank you for your time and jumping in on this. Appreciate it as always. <laughs> thank you so much. It was fun. Yes. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. See you later. Yes, thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your October. Appreciate you all jumping on. Bye, everyone. The sun, the sun is coming slowly I hold these moments closely, closely now